to know the call was from him. Suddenly so spent a whole lifetime trying to describe, like, you know, I, just, I, just, I just felt something inside and you something know, else. They, they put it in the song. I went to the meeting one night and my heart wasn't right and something got a hold of me. Most of us think of the church to get saved. You go to church because somebody had been bugging to death, so you went. It was Mother's Day, so you went. It was Christmas, so you went. And so you just went because you had nowhere else to go. Because you know, so you're just, just out there and there's a church service, so you, you, you walk in. Sit down. Have no idea that God was engineering the whole deal. Calls from him. And then when you give the call, he calls you to believe and answer the call. Let me get another scripture I read a few times. And mix it up a little more better than that. It's in Isaiah. Sixty-five. Some of your already already there. This to me sums all up what I'm going to say right now. I am salt of them that I ask not for me. Salt of them that I ask not for me. Now, meditate, meditate for a minute. I was looked for by people who weren't asking for me. And the next part says, and I am found of them that weren't looking for me. Now, if everybody in here, to be honest, just say that's what happened. You know? I am found of them that sought me not, and I am asked, sought of them that asked not for me. That's what happened. Why? Because you're into his program now. You might have prayed to get found of them, but nobody prayed that prayer. Because you didn't know there wasn't him. <laughs> You didn't even know you needed him. You didn't even know that him existed. You heard there was God, but nothing, nothing like this. He wasn't real. He was like out there somewhere abstract. There's a God. But I knew of a personal God who's personally involved with you and your life and your affairs and personally involved with saving you and making you like his son. That never crossed your mind. For the most part, I was going to church. Had no idea where to go. You will go to church because that's what you do when you change your life and start going to church. Thank God he didn't, didn't just let you go to church. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, that's not the worst place you can leave these days. <laughs> For the most part, yeah. go back to Romans. Yeah. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then we also call. You answered the call because he made a soul. You know that? You may not even know it's a call from God. You just know you felt something on the inside. I felt this tugging light, you know, something that's like, it's like drawing and you, you couldn't verbalize it because it was impossible to verbalize. But it was him calling, and then whom he called, he also justified. That's a big one to me. When he called you, at the same time he called you, he justified you. So appreciate what they're saying. Go backwards in Romans. <laughs> to chapter four. Chapter Abraham. A text that God had me spend years on with this church. Laying a foundation. What shall we say then, Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, by doing good deeds, he has the reason to glory. Good deeds have their place. What do you get from good deeds?
Bragging rights. That's why all good dealers brag. Then I spoke a thing, I did my good deed for today. If you got time to listen to it, they'll tell you what it is. Right? So since now Abraham was justified by good deeds, he has the reason to glory, but not before God. Because God is telling. All your good deeds do is make you a better person to go to hell. They don't change the fact that you're going. You should be went there in first class being nice. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. No, I don't know, I don't know any nice criminals. I haven't met a nice thief or a nice stick-up man. You? I mean, it's their attitude when they come at you to make sure you give them your wallet. <laughs> I say, I'll tell you, you might have your wallet. You have a thing again, don't give it up. Huh? So when that person does a good deed, that makes him a nicer sinner. Going to the same place. There's a cutting muscle with God. What's up the scripture? Here's a yoke again. My yoke is easy, and have to what? Believe God. And when he went in church, he believed God on the field. God said, Count the stars. We know he got saved at night. It's best to know about Abraham. He got saved at night. Right? Count the stars. He, and, and he, and I, I, I'm sure, I, I believe this with all my heart, Abraham went outside and laid down and tried to count the stars. Now, the question is how long he tried. How much effort he put into it. And looking at Abraham, his character, I believe Abraham tried several times. You know? mm -hmm. He got disturbed, he was on his way, and then something happened. Sarah yelled to him. His cell phone rang. <laughs> something messed the count up. She had to go back and redo it. Not realizing that there are millions of stars rising every second and the same number setting every second. Because he's on a revolving planet, this turning. And so the numbers of just to count the rising ones would be impossible. And he tried. Then God, what, what God told him to do, always works, what, what God tells him to do, sometimes we don't know what's in God's mind, what he's trying to accomplish. But he knows. And he's going to make it happen anyway because you've been born to the will of God. Abraham got this ordeal. You can't possibly go through that, look up. Now you start seeing for sure this whole thing that there's moves. You, you, you got you to lay still and just watch it for a while and realize this sun comes up in the east. And it makes its way across the sky all day long and sets in the west. And the moon rises up in the east and goes across and sets in the west. And all these trains of stars are rising in the east every second and setting in the west. And you realize that all this stuff is in motion. Whoever did this and controls this can't do anything. What was the issue? A son. Now, if he was really spiritual, so think of that, he had to think back to Adam. Made from the dust of the earth. Now, the one who made that and did that, and then made he, a woman, using a rib out of the side, made another creature, another creature. Any guy who could do that, and the star number, that's God's resume. He's saying to Abraham, I can. And so he said, Abraham, and he said, if God can do all that, God can give me a son through a wife, through a woman who can't have children. And when that thought hit Abraham, he got off the ground and went back home. He didn't pray. He didn't fast. He didn't ask God for anything else. He went home, for the first time in his mind though, he was relaxed. Because he knew that God, the same God made him a promise, and that God was able to do it. And therefore he said he did what? He rested. He never asked God, how about me? What about my heir? 
When God answered that question, he never asked God that question again, or they would have another son for another 50 years. But it's a done deal. Now you should be sure his faith got tried, he's got to be, you know, the, faith was the, the fact of his faith being tried is the truth story about Hagar, Sarah's maid, her Egyptian maid, said here, I think what God meant, I'll give you a clue, welcome God. Whenever you say I think what God means, you're wrong. <laughs> Automatically, just dismiss the thought. Because you have no idea, you're, gonna, you're, you're about to do something wrong. Right? We used, to, we used to take that line when we're going to go a certain course that we want to go or things necessary to go to make God's plans work. We forget that we're doing it for God. He's going to make his plans work because he said so. And what you think has nothing to do with it. All right, what you do is do what? Believe it. Just believe it. And then sit back. And for me, the adventure walking with God is to know that God has said things and see how God's going to pull up. That's the fun part of walking the Lord. You know? It's like a scripture, scripture in Habakkuk. I spent several years wondering how is God going to pull this scripture up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just there for the for the entertainment at that point. <laughs> you know? How is God going to do this? You know, yet a little while. Little Terry. This is going to come and not Terry. That's the biggest double talk I, ever, I had ever read. He says, it's going to be late, but it won't be. <laughs> Figure it out. Don't tell you, wait for it. For an individual to speak and not lie, it won't tear it. The Lord is going to be tearing or not. <laughs> yeah. What did God do? He gave us a day. Yeah. 10, 11, 97. And then he teared. Mm -hmm. You couldn't know a tear until you got a real day first. Right. You can't know the plane is late. There's no time the plane is coming in. That's right. So he gave us all time. Here's when the plane lands. Hmm. I'm coming on 10, 11, 97. Then he didn't come. Now he said that, he's back in his word, he said, Lord, carry away for it. But at the, the part that God leaves at the, at the end, it'll happen, and not tear. That's what we knew about the 10 days. We didn't know about him raising up at the last day. And once the resurrection, resurrection, resurrection takes place, it's going to be 10 days, and he will not tear it. He will come for the rapture in 10 days after that. He shall not tear it. Lord, carry away for it because the end is going to speak and not tear it. Mm. Yeah. And when God unraveled that for me, at that point I put my hands in God's life, my life in God's hands because I realized that he's in control of everything. That's right. And he'll work out the mystery of me. <laughs> you know? He'll do things with me that I didn't think are possible to be done. And that's the mess the fact that he's doing them, it's the way he's doing them. I mean, God can do this in your life and never miss it. <laughs> When I get you, I mean, if you have, you got a flaw, like your parents do, you got a flaw, your parents, you know, they keep reminding you of it. And they hop on because they want to make you a better person, right? Yes. You have to quit being late and always late, so and so forth. God's just the opposite. God will deal with the issue over here and cover one over here. That's right. You find That's those right. Yes, yes. And all the issues, I found that I, when we forgot to, to wear me out with, he hasn't touched them. And doing the same thing as if he had. Mm. Figure it out. Anyhow, Abraham. What's that the scripture? I'm going to say right now, this is the only question I want to answer, man, okay? Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not done. <laughs> and I, I, I look forward to coming, right? Because all I got to do is just ask a few questions and, and we'll be done. It's going to be real easy tonight and how to teach. Because I feel like it. Right? So much for me and him. What's that the scripture? Abraham believed God. And it was common unto him. It's going to make it really easy to read. You can cross out the word common and write credited. We understand the word in these days we're living. He gave him a righteous credit. When he get the credit? When he believes. Here's the thing about this that, that a lot of people don't seem to grasp. And it's, a, it's the issue, though. It's the issue. He didn't tell him. Abraham did not know he 
coming home tonight righteous. Because God didn't tell him. He told us the record. He said he come in the tent for righteous. Nowhere in the narrative does God say Abraham the righteous. Nowhere. So what does that mean? He had no reference point to act different. On the this one. On the doo doo. Don't don't program. When you believe, you change. You don't do anymore. Things you didn't do, you do. Right? You may be one of those really dumb ones. Because when I get saved, I'm going to live it. Having no idea what living or it was. <laughs> living it meant doing what you thought people get, who get saved do. And stop doing what you thought people could say, stop doing. It's a preconceived idea. Have no idea that living it, according to most people, was not even on God's agenda. Because the person you start learning when you get saved is what? You can't live. <coughs> because I tell you, all I have sinned and come sir. That's a big word. The biggest three living word there is. Oh. There's always exceptions. You get a population of seven billion people, all can apply. Yeah, it does. The price is all seven billion. All have sinned. All have come short. Now, I mean, the law of averages say that somebody should have got through. Somebody should have measured up. He says, all sin and all come short, so so much for living it. Then if you're not sure about that, he says, without me, you can do nothing. Just if anybody's gonna live it, it'll be me living it in you. Mm -hmm. Not us. Mm -hmm. Now to him that work. I was I turned into Romans because we're talking about the part that those he called he justified. Remember? Mm -hmm. That's a, we're almost there. Now to him that worketh is a reward not reckoned of grace. If you work, what? He owes you. God, he pays his debt. He ain't been working. There is a war. There's a debt owed. What's the payment? Yeah. <laughs> Good job, go to hell. Okay. Hey, nice work, go to hell. <laughs> That's the boys on to. He said, what kind of work do you think you're going to do to be acceptable to me and God? He said, the fact that you're doing it makes it worthless. Because we're a sinner trying to do good works for God. That's what God was came from last week. Came from going to bring God the fruit of the ground. It's going to be the nicest spread God ever saw. And I believe it was. I believe that Cain, what Cain brought God that day, represented the produce market in your best supermarkets. He brought it all. They were shiny. And they were watered, and they were ripe. There's not one bruise one amongst them. And he, he, he said, look, look, Lord. Hey, God said, where's the lamb? It came like the lamb. That's what Abel brought. Abel got that day, without no preparation, got a lamb, and killed it. How long have you been working on this fruit? About six months, growing season, from spring to harvest. Right? Every day, watering it, and weeding it, and sweating over it, and this is not as work or anything, and God's very happy with this. And God said, I don't want that. Because when one came, you're trying to bring me something from a cursed earth. So whatever comes out of this earth, comes out cursed. You brought me a great big beautiful curse. And expect me to be impressed with it. Mm. They said, and then, forget the earth, your hands, your hands plowed the ground, your hands planted the seed, your hands pulled the weeds, 
Your hands took care of, and your hands took the fruit, and you're a sinner.